All right, so for this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different than what I typically do. We're gonna be checking out a graphic design app that's totally web-based for product mockups, and it's called Artboard Studio. So I'll link this in the description if this is something you wanna check out. The link is also just artboard.studio if you wanna check it out in a web browser. It's currently in beta access, so you do have to request early access to get in on this right now. It's not a fully finalized product, but once you do get in, it's fully free, so it might be worth checking out, kind of regardless if you can get in on that free wave of people. I don't know if there's intent to make this a paid platform in the future. And for context too, I'm not getting paid to do this, and this isn't a referral program or something similar, but the person who made this does sell on the marketplace where I work, so I do know them from there, so at least keep that in mind as far as a little bit of bias. But I'm just gonna go ahead and log in so we can take a look at this program and what it offers. So logging in really quick here, type in my email as well as my password, there we go. So this is what the default login screen looks like. There is a walkthrough tutorial kind of telling you what's up. I've run through this before, so I'm just gonna close this out. And it's gonna offer you two different options as soon as you log into the program. Either create a new project or watch a walkthrough video. So I've actually never watched the walkthrough video and I'd rather just dive in and figure out what's going on with things. But that is certainly an option if you jump in here and you wanna know what's what. Although if you're watching this video, it probably covers at least some of what they have there, but they made it and I'm sure they know far better than I ever could. So keep that in mind. But I'm just gonna create a new project right now. And from that, it's gonna give me another walkthrough, which I'm going to ignore once again and just name my project something. So I'll, well, something works, that works for me. There's also an opportunity here to change the width as well as the height of a project if you want to start from scratch, so a totally blank artboard, but they do have a bunch of pre-made scenes, which I find to be pretty helpful. And by default, it shows all templates, but you can search by flat templates and as well as perspective screens. And I think perspective screens tend to be views that are a bit more three quarters, uh, something like that, as opposed to straight on, but I'm actually not totally sure about that because some of these are a little bit of both to me. So I'm just gonna stay on the one that says all templates since it covers everything. And as you scroll down, you'll notice there's a lot of options of pre-made scenes. But once you get into these pre-made scenes too, if they're not something you want to use, they're very easily customizable. So you can feel free to keep that in mind as you do stuff. Anything that you start with, you can replace basically every element in there if you don't wanna use what they gave you. So I'm actually gonna start with something I haven't checked out before, which is this coffee shop packaging and branding mock-up. And it does say below to the default screen size, so 1080 pixels by 720 pixels high, which should be plenty big for a lot of online applications. But if you want to actually print this stuff out, you're probably gonna to wanna to make these a lot bigger. So be sure to change the sizing as you need as you start to jump in here. So one thing that I would probably change with how this thing works from the get-go is there are a million screens here to this, you know, the helpful tutorial onboarding stuff, but I would much rather just jump in, start changing stuff, and then have these pop up as I'm trying to change the background or the type on something instead of checking through 15 boxes. It's just too much for me to remember at once, and I'd assume it's too much for a lot of people to remember at once. So that's a potential opportunity for this platform as it continues to become more feature complete and leave the beta stage. But I know where most stuff in this platform is now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this so we can start to jump in and make some changes. So by default, you can basically click any major element and move it around very easily. So there's this coffee bean scoop, there is this coffee cup, as well as this bag for coffee. They're all easily movable. You can resize them as well by just dragging on these little handles on the sides. You don't have to worry about holding shift or anything. It'll always maintain the same proportion. So if you wanted a giant coffee cup for whatever reason, there you go. And as you can see too, the, the quality maintains a pretty high quality. I don't see any noticeable blurriness on this as I do that. And I can zoom in on this entire artboard too by just using the Photoshop shortcuts of control plus or control minus. So if you wanna zoom in and see the detail a bit more clearly, that is certainly an option. There's also a handle up top to rotate this thing around, which I don't really see a lot of reason for doing that, 
But if you do want to do that, that's an option that's there for you. And I just used control Z as well to go back and that worked totally fine. So that is certainly helpful. But the really cool thing with this particular program or app, whatever you want to call it, is on anything that has a mock-up. So this bag, for example, has a mock-up right here. This coffee cup has a mock-up basically all over it as far as the pattern of the cup itself. And then this part that says Coffee Co. So if I double click on that, it's actually going to bring up a menu that I haven't seen before because this one must be a little bit more in depth than some of the other ones. But you can either replace the design, which appears to be the design on the cup as a whole, or you can replace the paper holder. So let's start by replacing the design. So that'll bring up the design of the cup itself. And from this side menu too, there's a bunch of different options of things that you can add in or change. And on the far right, there are layers that would allow you to drag and drop various elements. So you can just very quickly do that from the layers menu. And you can also delete things from these layers by clicking on them and then hitting this little trash can icon. But we're gonna wanna add in a different pattern. So let's start with that. So right here, well, this top one is actually adding in entire elements. So like electronic items or packaging items. So if I were to want to put a box in here, which who knows why I'd want to do that. But if I drag and drop the box, it adds a box to this. So that's more for the entire scene, but you can do that on the label too, if you want a box on your label, which would be interesting. There's also this pack, which is more textures. So fabric or stone. Um, it's kind of weird that that says no items found under front view, but on top view, if I wanted like a denim pattern for whatever reason, once again, kind of a weird thing to do on this, but it's totally available to use if you want a cup that looks like denim. So if I were to go back to this other tab up at the top here, you can see that we now have a denim coffee cup, which that's something we made it. We're done here, but I don't, I don't want this actually. So I'm just going to delete that. You know, I, I clicked on it and then hit delete. You can add free photography from Unsplash, very easy to do. Um, I don't know if this searches their entire library or not, but I would assume something similar using their API. There's an option to insert text. So you can either add these pre-made designs. So if I do that, it places this pre-made design right here, but I don't think I can change the type on this pre-made design, which is a little bit weird. But what you can do is add simple text, which will just bring some text in here for you to do what you want with. So if I were to change this to something new like that, I can highlight this text and then I can go here and change the color of the text to basically whatever color I want. I can increase the font size to something different. Although this is acting kind of buggy for me, it's not updating properly on the number as I do that. So I'm not sure totally what's going on there, but I've had some difficulties, but you can also just click on the text itself and then drag this little arrow thing. Well, it appears that you have to actually highlight this. So I'll highlight that text and then you can use this little bar on the right hand side to shrink or enlarge the type, which is actually working properly. I don't know why the, the actual numbers aren't working as they should, but below that we have some other options like inserting shapes, or in this case, there's also some pre-made icons that we can use. But if I want to insert a square, I can click that insert a square. I could then change the fill color to be something else. I can change the stroke color to be something else. If I don't want a border, I can change that from one to zero and then hit enter. So now it's just a red box as opposed to a box with a stroked line. But what I actually want to do here is this option, which is your uploads. So you can upload your own item right here. So you can click that and select from a folder anywhere. I think the maximum file size is something like three megabytes. So it's fairly small, but they do give you incredibly generous disk storage of 250 gigabytes to store your designs on the server. So that is more than plenty for pretty much anyone I could ever think of when you're dealing with small three, three megabyte files. But I previously put in this design I did on here by just uploading it and letting it process. It was very easy to do. So I'm going to drag and drop my design on this artboard. I'm going to rotate it around a little bit, just like that. And I was holding shift when I did that, which did the thing where it locks it into actual normal rotation degrees, as opposed to being free form where you can make it a bit off kilter. If I hold shift, it makes it perfect, which is always a nice little feature to have. So I'm just going to make this fill up this entire box. I'm not going to use these other layers with the original design on it. So I'm going to click those and hit my delete button to remove them. And now that I've done that, if I go back to the original tab here, you can see that the coffee cup has been updated with my design. 
which I think actually works pretty well on a coffee cup. Not bad. If I want to change this coffee co, I can double click on that, but this time select the paper holder, which will just bring up this coffee co. It seems to be an SVG layer as opposed to live type. So I'm going to delete that because I don't want it to say coffee co. I'll hit my type button, add some simple type. I don't know what I want this to say. So I'm just going to type party parrot coffee co, which should be awesome. I'm going to change the text color to, I'm not sure what will show up well in my design. Maybe white is totally fine. I'm going to increase this font a little bit if it's going to let me do that. Let's see here. It is freaking out. Definitely something still a little bit buggy when it comes to the type that we have or the type options that it's giving us. So I'm going to try just a little bit more. There we go. Maybe I had to just make the, the type box a little bit larger so it had room to do that. And there's also these object settings, which I just noticed. So I can, you know, center this entirely on the, the window that's available. So that's a huge time saver. And also there's a bunch of different font families too. So if you don't want to use the default font, you can change that to what appears to be a ton of different options. Oh goodness. That is not an option I want. Please find a normal looking font once again, just a second. There we go. Good enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead and close this paper holder. I'm going to close this replace design, which is on the coffee cup. because I don't need these tabs anymore. I feel like I'm done with what I need to do. And from here, we now have the party parrot coffee co with the updated cup. I can move this cup around anywhere and I can do the exact same thing for this box. So I can double click on that and I can replace either the package design, which appears to be the entire package or the label design, which appears to be this coffee co thing right there. So I'm going to go to the package design to see what's there. Um, it looks like these are all individual little pieces. Oh, this is actually just one image. So in this case, if I were to replace this thing, I might want to build something in Photoshop and do the actual design work there or build something in Illustrator and have it be completed with a transparent background that I could then bring into this. So it would be much, much easier and much faster for me to make the changes I want to make as opposed to using the built-in tools here, which are totally fine. They work just fine. But this program in my mind is not something that you'd want to be creating finalized, polished design work in. It's much more about presenting the design work that you already have done. So I would, I'd much rather finish everything in Photoshop or finish everything in Illustrator and then save it out as an SVG or a PNG or JPEG, whatever the format is and whatever formats this allows you to use and then do that work there. So also just some stuff to be mindful of here. These are the elements in the layers, but if I want to change stuff around, that's for sure something I can do. This ground color, it appears I can move this up or down. If I want to change the, you know, the perceived horizon of this thing, there were these textures before, which if I go back to something like wood, which seems a bit appropriate for maybe the ground, there's top views as well as front views of wood. So far to bring in some wood for maybe this background if i want it to feel a bit more rustic i'm just looking at the options really fast i can just click this wooden plank which will drop it into the artboard once it loads in so i can just move this in here move this around a little bit so it takes up the space that i want it to and then i can drag it in the layers menu until it's just above the ground color so just like that i mean i don't think that looks particularly great but as you can tell, it's pretty easy to change stuff around. Or if you want to make it the entire background, that's something you can do as well. In this case, it breaks the perspective a little bit, but you can very easily drag new things into these, these different areas. And I can change the background colors too, if that's something that I'm looking to do. So if I want this to be a, you know, a white or a near white, whoops, that is not a near white. Come on, you can do it. And then change this sort of blue background to something different. Just keep scrolling here until it looks like something decent that works for me and very quickly to go over to how to add elements in here there's this insert items box where if you click it it will give you basically a ton of different options for scenery types so from print packaging electronics apparel decorative stationary almost anything you can think of it it appears that this has it so i'll go into miscellaneous because i don't know what to expect here and then it gives you front view objects, which are probably what we want with a scene that has a bunch of front view objects, as well as top view objects, where if it was a top down view, that might make a lot more sense. In this case, I think all these would break the perspective that we're going for. 
So I'm just going to check out to see if there's any top view objects that I want. I don't see anything here that makes a ton of sense. There is this sort of little coffee cup bowl looking thing that I can drag in here and then it adds it to the file just like that. It says abstract item, but it looks like a little coffee bowl to me. And I can of course go to these different areas too and pick something else if that's, you know, that's not what I'm looking for. So if I go to something like cosmetic, because why not? We can make this coffee and makeup and I can add in either a front view or a top view cosmetic item. I'll see if there's anything that looks remotely appropriate for this scene, which there probably won't be, but you never know when you need these makeup brushes. So I'll drag those in here. Once they load, they're in front of everything right now, but if I want to push them back, I can just drag this in the layers menu. It's pretty easy to do, as you can see, just above the ground color, and then move this to something in the background. So that pretty much sums up a quick overview of what this program can do. I think it's extremely powerful. And once you're done as well, if you click in this background here on the right hand side, there's quick exports. So as a JPEG or JPEG at 2X, which 2X is usually for retina screens, there is to MailChimp or Dropbox or Google Drive, and then Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. So if I were to pick JPEG and then export that, basically it would download the scene that I have right here, and I could then upload that wherever I wanted to. So extremely easy to do. And at least while this remains a free program, or at least a free for trial program, if you're looking to mock some stuff up and see how your design work looks in it, perfect option. It really is quite robust for such a new web-based app. I'm very impressed by the functionality and how easy it is to just quickly pick this up, figure out how stuff works, pick from the pre-made scenes or build custom scenes, and then move everything around until you get a scene that looks and feels compelling to you. But that's pretty much all I have on this one. So I do hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button to let me know. And also, if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new content for designers just like this. So thanks so much for watching.